Welcome back to another message crawler update. Today I'm planning out version 6. So I've been posting a lot of other videos about my other projects, EDU toolbar and stuff like that. Um, haven't been sharing anything about message crawler. That's because I've been actually working on it and not telling anybody anything about it. I've been researching some of the technology that's going to be used in the next version. So what technology and what problems I'm trying to solve. And there are two. One is people were asking me to add a database to message crawler so that when you load data into it, um, the data stays, right? So it's not just a conversion tool. You can hold on to your data in the current state and you can continue working with it, which uh, is reasonable, right? You can't save out a dead file, but it's nicer if, if it stays in the database and you don't have to save and import and all that stuff. Um, also, you'll be able to, if you have a database, you'll be able to load more data at the same time and only pick selective sets to do a conversion. So I wanted to look into a possible backend database. And of course, people said, yeah, just put SQLite on the backend and it's easy. Uh, it's not that easy. Uh, the second problem was the version 5 is written in an old version of .NET framework, which I was using because I everything I was building needed to be compatible with Relativity's version of framework. So if I built an agent for Batch Guru, it had to be in .NET frameworks. 4.62 and so I just made all my projects standard and it's kind of an old framework um, I think they're up to 4.72 now but doesn't matter I wanted to go with the absolutely newest .NET 6 right that's the newest .NET framework it's got new version of C sharp it's got all kinds of stuff and some of the problems it solves are like long paths for example long paths have been a problem and in .NET Framework, you have to do workarounds, and I've been doing workarounds, and I've been breaking other things. And anyway, .NET 6, 5 and 6 natively support long paths, and they support a bunch of other cool features that I could use. So what I wanted to do is rewrite Message Crawler in modern, uh, with modern development tools. So let me take you to my screen and show you uh, what I have. All right, so this is Message Crawler version 6, and you'll say there's nothing in here, and yes, there's nothing in here. I literally went to File, New, and I started over. Now, I'm not going to rewrite every single piece of code. Most of the code I'll be able to copy and paste to bring in, um, but this is kind of a, a framework that I built to test out some of the technologies I want to implement. So let's go over what's going on here. And on top left, we have a new project, open project, new SQL project, open SQL project. An idea is to support SQLite database, which is going to be a local database. So if you're using that, it is kind of like you're using old version of message crawler. Nothing changed. And if you want to use um, SQL server to load lots of data, you could do that as well. So that was a goal right from the start. Um, and let's uh, let's so let's create an SQLite project and um, let's load some data. So I'm going to make one called DB7, um, and so now we have our DB7 SQLite. And SQL works too. It's just uh, we're going to use this one. And so what we can do now is um, load data in. So I'm going to take a that viewer, that importer. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to load a dat file. So one of the biggest issues with like uh, relativity or other systems, you have to make fields, you have to figure out what's what. Well, let me show you how easy it is here. So I'm just going to pick a dat file. We'll go to my um, text message sample data. Pick my favorite um, dat file. And so we need to make some text fields and some date fields. So we have a date field. I'm going to click on the button date. And we have a date field here. I'm going to select everything else. I'm going to say uh, varchar. This is text. So all the fields got created. So all I got to do, auto map, import. And now data has been imported. But where is the data? There's nothing on the screen. Well, we have this entry here on the sidebar that says we loaded 79 entries. So now we can click here and now we'll get to see the actual data, right? So we can have multiple imports and we'll be able to click on the button and we'll be able to switch between them. So that's the first thing you need to work out is uh, creating database and getting data in. Not too bad because like I said, the, like 
people said, well, I'll just put SQL on backend, you know. So it wasn't too bad to do it, but there are other things that relate to it that are a little bit more challenging. So the next thing I had to do is searching and the regular filtering, well, kind of sucks. So I had to build this thing. This took me a long time, query builder. So let's, um, let's take our Slack and let's say we want to query for all the Slack data. So I'm gonna go to query builder and I'm gonna say application equals Slack. We're gonna add that and not worry about other stuff. We can do sort order and things like that. Um, not everything here works. This is just a prototype. So clicking on one run button breaks everything. So we're gonna do a search and bam, we have our results. So now the result of a search was added to here, search queries. So now we can switch between imported data and search query. Uh, search query is a dynamic search, like saved search and relativity that runs an SQL query and pulls in data. So if we were to load more data here and it's also Slack, it's gonna be included here. And now the other thing we have here is static searches. So let's um, let's like sort this descending, for example. We're gonna say save grid as search. We can give it a name. And so now here we have a static search. So this is just remembers a list of uh, doc IDs, the IDs, and this is the actual query. So now we can switch between them and we can see we have different um, type of data sets. And of course, if you delete your import set, these guys will have no documents to, you know, to retrieve. Uh, but again, the idea is this is a dynamic search, which queries based on the condition and a static search uh, basically stores list of IDs so that no matter what happens in the database, you can go back to that search and um, retrieve those records. So that's, um, that's what I built so far. This took me, you know, way, way too long. I mean, I'm sure, uh, you know, team of five developers would have had this done over the weekend or a week or something. Um, but it took me a long time to get here. I think I figured out all the steps that I needed, uh, all the parts. Um, next thing is seeing how I can take my existing uh, message crawler controls and everything else and kind of merge it with this. I don't know if I need to take this code and put it into that existing message crawler or bring it here. Either way, it's not going to be, it's not going to be quick. It's not going to be easy. It's, there's going to be a lot of, um, like a stupid code where you just have to go to each tool and modify something over and over and over. So that's where I am. Um, I'm probably going to really concentrate on this over next month or so. So that's going to be my late spring, early summer. So if I kind of, you know, dive in and I don't release too many updates, that's what I'm working on. I'm trying to bring in database support to message crawler. And um, it seems like everything's gonna work. I was able to test everything. I'm, you know, I don't see a reason why this wouldn't work. Anyway, if there are any other important features that you think that need to be included in message crawler six, do let me know about them because, well, now's the time. Now's, now is when I'm planning everything. So I'm gonna get back to working on this and I will see you on another update.